Mr. Speaker, the attacks in Israel last weekend shocked the world. Over 1,400 people murdered, one by one, over 3,500 wounded, almost 200 taken hostage. The elderly, men, women, children, babes in arms, murdered, mutilated, burned alive. We should call it by its name. It was a pogrom. Mr Speaker, the families of some of the missing are in the public gallery today. We call for the immediate release of all hostages. And I say to them, we stand with you, we stand with Israel. The murdered and the missing come from over 30 countries, including the United Kingdom. The terrible nature of these attacks means it is proving difficult to identify many of the deceased. But with a heavy heart, I can inform the House that at least six British citizens were killed. A further ten are missing, some of whom are feared to be among the dead. We are working with Israel to establish the effects as quickly as possible, and we are supporting the families who are suffering unimaginable pain. We are also helping British citizens who want to leave Israel. We have organised eight flights so far, bringing out over 500 people with more flights leaving today. We're working with neighbouring countries on land evacuations for our citizens in Gaza and the West Bank. I've spoken specifically to President Sisi about supporting civilians to leave Gaza by the Rafah border crossing, which at present remains closed. And we have a border force team in Egypt working with our embassy to help citizens when they are able to cross. I will come back to the grave humanitarian situation in Gaza in a moment. But first, Mr Speaker, I want to address the British Jewish community directly. As I said at Finchley United Synagogue last week and at the Jewish school I visited this morning, we stand with you now and always. This atrocity was an existential strike at the very idea of Israel as a safe homeland for the Jewish people. I understand why it has shaken you to your core. And I am sickened that anti-Semitic incidents have increased since the attack. We are doing everything that we can to protect you. We are providing an additional £3 million for the Community Security Trust to protect schools, synagogues and other Jewish community buildings. And we are working with the police to ensure that hate crime and the glorification of terror is met with the full force of the law. I know the whole House will support this and join me in saying, unequivocally, we stand with the Jewish community. Hamas is using innocent Palestinian people as human shields, with the tragic loss of more than 2,600 Palestinian lives, including many children. We mourn the loss of every innocent life, civilians of every faith, every nationality who have been killed. And so, let's say it plainly, we stand with British Muslim communities too. (laughs) Mr Speaker, Israel was founded not just as a homeland for the Jewish people, but as a guarantor of their security, to ensure that what happened to the Jewish people in the Holocaust could never happen again. Through its strength and resilience, Israel gradually achieved some of that longed-for security despite the strategic threats on their borders, including Hezbollah in the north, with Iran at their back. They normalise relations with the UAE and Bahrain through the Abraham Accords and move towards normalising ties with Saudi Arabia, steps that not long ago were thought unthinkable. One reason why this attack is so shocking is that it is a fundamental challenge to any idea of coexistence which is an essential precursor to peace and stability in the region. Mr Speaker, the question is, how should we respond? I believe we must support absolutely Israel's right to defend itself. To go after Hamas, take back the hostages, deter further incursions and strengthen its security for the long term. This must be done in line with international humanitarian law, but also recognising that they face a vicious enemy that embeds itself behind civilians. As a friend, we will continue to call on Israel to take every possible precaution 
to avoid harming civilians. I repeat President Biden's words. As democracies, we are stronger and more secure when we act according to the rule of law. Humanity, law, decency, respect for human life. That's what sets us apart from the mindless violence of the terrorist. Mr Speaker, there are three specific areas where the United Kingdom is helping to shape events. First, we are working to prevent escalation and further threats against Israel. On Friday, RAF surveillance aircraft began patrols to track threats to regional security. I have deployed a Royal Navy task group to the eastern Mediterranean, including RFA Lime Bay and RFA Argus, three Merlin helicopters and a company of Royal Marines, ready both to interdict arms and support the humanitarian response. We are bolstering our forces in Cyprus and across the region. And let me be clear, we are not engaging in fighting or an offensive in Gaza, but we are increasing our presence to prevent broader regional instability at this dangerous moment. Second, Mr Speaker, I'm proud that we are a long-standing and significant provider of humanitarian aid to the Palestinian people. And I can announce today that we are increasing our aid by a third with an additional £10 million of support. An acute humanitarian crisis is unfolding to which we must respond. We must support the Palestinian people because they are victims of Hamas too. Like our allies, we believe that Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people or their legitimate aspirations to live with equal measures of security, freedom, justice, opportunity and dignity. Hamas simply does not stand for the future that the Palestinians want, and they seek to put the Palestinian people in harm's way. So we must ensure humanitarian support urgently reaches civilians in Gaza.